Good morning, everybody. Um, blessings and love to you all today. I've been asked to share my faith story with you all, and I'm honoured that I can share it with you and that I want to. It is difficult for me, and I'm also saddened with how I feel about it. I hope some of you can understand me, and it helps someone. If only one person, it's all worthwhile. We, it's all worthwhile me sharing this with you. And you're going to have to excuse me if I blubber a little bit. Um, and I'm sorry if I do. I have always loved God. And I've always felt him in my life as far as I can remember. He showed me many times his presence with Jesus. And the love and the Holy Spirit. I know sometimes we are closer and sometimes we feel distant. That's so often true when we are struggling with issues which blind our faith journey, which we all go through at some point. And I definitely did go through this. It's so difficult when you know God is listening, but your whole body is numb and distressed. And I knew this when I lost my husband, Alan. He was killed on his bike by a lorry driver. One second he is in this world and the next gone. And that's it, he's gone forever. I was told by a liaison officer and she had knocked on my door and she enters and has to deliver you a hand grade of news which changes your life forever. And then you have to pick it up and she has to put all the pieces back together or she tries to. And she stood there being so professional and explained he has been killed and you have to try to get your mind to work. It does, but with silence, with slowness and with shock. I never knew you could taste shock and you definitely can taste it. And it takes a long time to go. And it's even happening as I'm speaking about it. But it's good that I can. I'm going to and I'm going to do it now. <laughs> we sat down, I looked at her in the eyes and I said I can do nothing at this moment. And she explained to me, we need to, Helen, it's important that we ring the family before it gets out in the press. I knew very plainly in the depth of my soul, I needed God's guidance, total love there and then, and nothing else was gonna help. My liaison officer looked at me into the face and said, Yes, let's pray, Helen. We both held our hands tightly and bowed our heads in prayer with my dog, Elmer, in the middle of us all. And I muttered some sort of rambling prayer out loud. And then I said, quite plainly, I can do not do this without you, God. You must fill me with love and understanding. Guide me to be loving and to do the right thing for Alan, his family and the accused. Fill me and refill me to go on. I have nothing at this moment. I've got no energy at all. And right then I was filled with warmth through every part of my body down to my fingertips. We both looked at each other and Vicky knew we had our prayer answered. I had the courage to go on. It was a very difficult night and I walk, walked around in a bubble and bewilderment and my family are amazing to me and Alan's family because he was my second husband. We've been married about 18 months. I would have sank without them all and especially Vicky too. The weeks and the months went by with so much rubbish thrown at us, emptiness and shock that a man had to go to prison and they had, it seemed so terrible. He did not go out in the morning to kill Alan no one does, but unfortunately, if you break the law, this is the price that you have to pay. But I found it hard to hate this person. I could only think of how he felt and how his family felt as well. I fought hard for our family, but then I was also cross with God for putting me through this. So much hurtful heart pain no energy, no love to give anyone. I felt totally numb, 
numb and I was so disappointed in him and I totally was. I kept going back to the day it happened, but I felt he'd given all of his love to me there and then and I'd had my fill. No more. My lovely church friend said, ask for refills, but they never came. So I thought. The kindness from everyone was so beautiful and so heartwarming. I would find flowers and gifts at the front door from people I didn't even know. Coffee, tea, sugar, milk, cakes, from people everywhere, up the road, friends, customers, church friends. I had trinkets given me with love and thoughtfulness, but I was still blinded by it all. It was just a numb feeling. So that's why no one saw me for a long time. I was angry inside and lost. My friend's persistence through prayer and care have been amazing. I know now that their prayers worked and they listened to me moan and be disrespectful to my face. Sue Rogers had the worst time and time again of listening to me. I have done her hair for a long time, so we sat there for hours talking and she was amazing. Then my other lovely friend, Jan Smith, asked if I would like to join a Bible group in September last year. And I went. I felt it was the right time, but it was hard. As I knew people there, and I was ashamed of how I felt. I never really questioned him before, but I was full of them. I can tell you how many, I can't tell you how many times in the last 11 months, the love and guidance from the Holy Spirit and the scriptures that I have been re I have read and he's shown me where I have slipped off the path. Time and time again. I think God with Jesus' love has let my brain and body settle and recover in time. And four, year, four years is nothing in God's kingdom. It seems like a lifetime when you're lost, but I have been found. Lockdown has been difficult for lots of people in this world, but for me, it's given me time to recover and speak to God out loud. I've been on tremendous walks with my dog, Alma, which has given me time to reflect and talk openly to God through Jesus' love. And I know I have said it all to him. All. I've learnt loads through our amazing services and the Zoom Bible groups and prayer and no stern stone has been unturned by me. I now feel I can forgive myself of my denial and to let Alan be at peace with our, without being cross for leaving me. I feel renewed and open to God's love with Jesus and the Holy Spirit more and more. And I know I will get the odd day when I'm down, but I know it's only a day, not years and months. There's one thing that has got me through it every day. I was given this card from my lifelong friend, Leslie Baker. And it is 10 things God wants you to remember. On each square is something to pray for. I looked at it and read it out every day to remind me when I was at my lowest point that I knew this card was given with love, faith, friendship, thought, like a sister. Even though how awful I felt, I knew if I only read it out to him, the spirit knew deep down in the depths of my soul he knew, he knew, I knew he was there, even though I was questioning it. My sister and daughters, Chloe and Olivia, commented on this piece that I've been writing, that they felt often God was protecting me through our awful situations we were put through, the courts, 
the many solicitors, the barristers and the financial situations. Looking back now, I'm in a better fa place and have I felt numb. But I knew really that he was there holding me, getting me through some of these very, very dark days. So thank you, Holy Trinity, for loving me through the good and bad times. I feel your presence often and I just broke the wall of hopelessness down. And thank you for the hammer. I'm out the other side into life. And hi, everyone. I feel good. I feel renewed and, and loved. Even though I always was, I actually really do feel loved. So tomorrow is 100% of your future. If you think this often and learn from yesterday and live for tomorrow with God's love, he is there and it is us that is blocking his words and love. And I did. No more. Thank you for listening to my faith story. To those that believed in me, your prayers and your strength helped me through an amazing, t awful time. But how lucky am I to have you all in my life. Thanks very much for listening.